so I've actually got an eye beacon attached to my cat. Ruby is alive, Ruby's not going in. Oh, I want to dream for developer happiness. My name is Ellie. Um, I'm working for Thoughtbot in the New York office. I'm going to talk. I'm going to give a talk about um, just in time, a case study in time zones. Um, to start with, um, so this is the Indian Pacific uh, train. It's in Australia, close to home for me. Um, it goes from Adelaide all the way to Perth. It takes I don't know so many days, and it's one of the places, one of the trains, the only trains I think that have its own time zone. Um, another cool fact is Samoa in Samoa Islands in 2011 decided to change the time zone so they went from December 29 to December 31st and completely skipped you know December 30 just because they wanted to be closer to Australia and New Zealand with the time zones to make it easier for business. North Korea this year in August decided that um, they want to differentiate themselves from China. So instead of being uh, plus eight hours um, after UTC, they uh, actually changed to be to eight and a half. Um, um, Nepal is one of the places where the time zone is actually five, a plus five and a quarter after UTC. So there's. <laughs> A lot of places with different, really, yeah, really weird different time zones. Uh, I think there's about, on average, 70 countries or places change the time zones every year. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about um, time-related libraries. I'm going to set up Rails to work with user time zones, custom ones. We're going to play with time in Rails, and then we're going to work through a feature in time zones and we're going to work through it. Uh, in Ruby, we have two libraries. Uh, we have time and daytime that handle um, all, the, all the things with time. Since Ruby 193, um, there are very few differences between the two libraries. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to use time for the majority of my examples. Uh, TZ Info is another good library to know. Uh, it provides daylight savings and work transformations between times in different time zones. So this is the thing that pretty much handles all the change, changes that I talked about before with different countries. Um, it provides support to about 582 different time zones. Uh, when I checked how many time zones there are in Israel, Israel is very lucky because we only have one. Um, so I used to live in Australia. Australia has six states and two territories, and we have about 13 different time zones. I currently live in the states, and in the states we have 29 different time zones. Um, in Rails, we have a module which is called Active Support Time Zone. Uh, it acts as a wrapper for the TZ Info library, and it limits the set of zones provided by TZ Info to a meaningful subset of 100 and 46 zones. It also displays all the zones in a much friendlier name. So instead of having America forward slash New York, we can just see Eastern Time, US and Canada, and the same for Jerusalem. Uh, in combination with active support time with zone, uh, it provides us um, a nice DSL to actually, um, when you do time.new in Rails, it actually goes through the time zone. So you don't have to use um, to instantiate time with zone in Rails. If you want to find out all the time zones that Rails supports, you can just do rake time zones all, and it gives you all the ones that can you, you can work with. Uh, to check the current time zones where you are, if you're going to console and you do um, time.zone, uh, you will see that by default we are using UTC, and it gives you all the rest of the information on the time zone. Still in console, I can um, set my time zone by passing it a string, as Perth, for example. Um, and then uh, when I do it in console, this is done temporarily. Um, if I want to change that 
uh, for the rest of the applications for good, you can set that in, con in your config application RB and just pass config time zone and give it the time zones that you want. But please keep the default to UTC, and I'm going to talk about that a bit later, about why that's a good idea. Yeah, pretty much stick with um, UTC. If we want to, OK. So the idea is keep your app, your Rails app, in UTC and then let your user set their own time zones. And we can do that by adding um, an attribute to user for time zone and set the default to be UTC. Uh, we want it to be strings and not enos because all the um, time-related um, functions in Rails use strings. So please stick with strings. And then when we use a form, uh, if you use simple form, it has a helper method for time zone, which is just a time underscore zone, and it gives you a select menu for all the time zones that are available or supported in Rails. Um, and then the way we use that, once it's um, saved on the user, is in application controller, we can use an around filter, uh, which in this case are called the set time zone, if there's a current user and we pass it a block, which is the request, which means that um, we're setting time uh, use zone for the current user's time zone, and it's only going to be valid for the time of the request that's been done. So after the request has been finished, it will go back to the default UTC time. And then for displaying custom user uh, time zones, in our views, we can just do time, whatever time it is, in time zone for current user time zone. Um, if you are working with APIs, it's a recommendation to use the ISO 8601 uh, standard. Um, it's a good idea to use it because it's human readable, uh, it's unambiguous, it's widely supported, and it's um, sortable. So this is an example of when we use time.now UTC in ISO 8601. You can see that uh, the string finishes with a Z, and that means that the time is in UTC. If you want to take a string or a time step N that is um, ISO 8601 and convert it back to a local time, we can just do time.iso 8601 and pass it the time step that we want to convert back. Uh, when we are working in Rails, we have three different time zones. We have a system time, we have application time, and we have a database time. The system time is the time that's on our machine. Uh, application time, it's whatever we define in uh, application.rb in config. And the database time is usually, unless we change anything, will stick to UTC as well. So let's play a bit in console. Uh, so if we go into console and we do time.zone.name, we can see that we are in UTC. Uh, if we look at time.now, we can see that when I did this presentation, I was in the States, and it was about almost 6 p.m. in the afternoon, and uh, we are four hours after UTC. Uh, if I set the time zone to Fiji, and then I can check that, and yes, we are still in Fiji, and if I do time.now, you can see that I'm still in New York because this is my machine time, not the, Ruby, not the Rails application time. If I want to get the Rails application time, I can do timezone.now, which will give me the time in Fiji, which was you know, a day later at about 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. in the morning. We can also get that by doing time.current, which gives us the same time, or we can do time now in time zone. Uh, okay, so checking that we are still in Fiji, let's look at date. So date again, if I do date today, I get the date that I was in New York. Um, but if I do date um, time.zone.today, I'll see that I get the correct time, which is the day after, according to the application. Uh, we can also do um, time.zone.tomorrow to get the day after when it was in Fiji when I did this presentation. And if you use any of the Rails helpers, uh, like one day from now or two hours from now and so on, it goes through the localized time as well. So you get the correct time. Uh, when you query time zones in um, Rails, please use time.current uh, and not time.now. Um, so yeah, don't. Don't use time.now, uh, use time.current or two hours ago. Other things not to do, don't use uh, date of today or date today to time, but instead use, do use um, time zone of today or one day from now. And the last thing that I haven't mentioned yet, if you are parsing um, strings, 
instead of using time pause, go through the time through the zone. So do time zone, pause, and whatever the string that you have. And if you are using a strip time, finish that call with in time zone to get it in your localized uh, time. Uh, testing time zone. So when I did this presentation, um, I learned that from Rails 4.1, we actually have built-in helpers um, to um, freeze time in our tests. So it gives us three, uh, three methods. It's travel, travel to, and travel back. So in this case, we are doing travel to one day and pass it a block. So whatever is in the block, you know, whatever we test inside the block will be one day from now. If you're not using a block, you will need to um, tear down the, the spec and use travel back to go back to your regular time in your specs. If you're using Rails, which is older than 4.1, you will need to use, there's a few gems that you can use. So you have TimeCorp, De De um, DeLorean, and Zonaby. Um, I used to be a Back to the Future fan. So I used to love using DeLorean because how can you not do DeLorean back to the present? But uh, most of the applications that I worked at have used TimeCorp. But TimeCorp has um, freeze uh, method like freeze, tra um, travel, return, and use zone. All of them take a block. So again, whatever you have in that block will happen, will run within the time that you are specifying. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about a recent project. I was working on a project for a marketing company and they were letting people, their users, um, write um, tests uh, to check that certain marketing tags were on a page. So they were running that through um, acceptance tests in the browser. Um, so those are really tests that the user are building, not the tests that I've, wrote, that I've written to actually test the application. And we wanted to allow them to run the tests at certain times, or we wanted to have a schedule. So the first go of the of the um, project, we had test suites that the user created that needed to run daily or weekly at a set time, either um, 1 a.m. Or, uh, or 2 a.m. And use and we wanted to use res uh, rescue scheduler to set the schedule to run the background workers. So uh, we created a schedule rule class and that, um, this class actually handled all the rules that we wanted to when to run which test suites in the app. And then we used, um, in the scheduler, we used, uh, we defined when they should run for a weekly test or a daily test. And if you don't remember, or if you need a refresher about cron syntax, um, so it starts from uh, left to right, which starts with minutes, hours, day of the month, month, and day of the week. So zero and seven above Sunday. So if you look back here, we say run at um, 1 a.m. in the morning every Sunday or 1 at 2 a.m. in the morning uh, daily. And then um, what was the problem? So I was in Australia at the time, and the schedule tests were running at 2 a.m. Australian Eastern time, regardless of the user's time zone. So it doesn't matter if you live in, um, in the States, you know, it was whenever it ran in Australia. So that was a problem. Uh, so second go, we decided to change the, the test runs according to the user setting, so we can allow the user to set when they want to run the test, either to add a specific uh, weekday, hour, and time zone. And then we wanted to have the rescue scheduler to run hourly and look for the test suites that are due to run. Uh, and also we wanted um, the rescue scheduler to look for test runs where the background job failed and thus had to be run again. So we changed our schedule rule class to have every that took a string, either daily or weekly. Uh, a weekday, which was integer, an hour, which, which was integer, a time zone, which was string, last scheduled run at time step if it um, runs successfully, and then it had a references to the test suite to, that it needed to run. Uh, still in second go, uh, I added a method to active support time zone to find all the current zones within this hour. So all the current time zones that happen now. And I use that in the schedule rule to find all the test suites that should run with other options that are passed through that. So if you look at suites to run, it finds the rules, whatever options I give it, older than time ago, which on average was a time dot current. And then I map all the suites that I need to select to run the tests in. 
And then the schedule run worker basically does schedule uh, rule, run scheduled with a scope of daily, and then passes a switch to run, which is um, later than yesterday, and so on. Can we do better? Okay, so is, is looking at this, is this, is, does this work? Yes, it does. Uh, is it readable? Not so much. Is it maintainable? If I look at it, you know, six months from my will, I know exactly what it does. Maybe less than what I do now. Can we do better? Yes, we can. Uh, but introducing our in UTC. So what we've done in a third go, we removed the current zones method, which I added to active support time zone, and we introduced our in UTC column in schedule class. So we changed, we added a migration, um, which was an integer, and then in the schedule rule, we added an um, active record call, call back to before save to set the hour according to whatever the hour is in UTC. And then the method becomes really, really simple because now I only need to match on the one column, which is the hour, um, hour in UTC, which matches the time that is now, the hour that is now. The uh, worker didn't have to change, so it's pretty much exactly the same. I pass it the hour, which is time.now.utc, um, and pass it the hour. So previously we had this in the schedule wall, and currently we have something a lot simpler. Um, so the first takeaway that I want you to, um, to take from this talk is to always work with UTC as much as you can. And a couple more takeaways is use time.current or time.zone today that will solve most of your problems in your Rails app. And then freeze the time in your tests, preferably by using a block. Um, so when I, did, when I was working on this app, I was in Australia, and then I came to visit Israel, and half of my tests uh, failed. So I learned that I really need to um, uh, stub my time in my specs. And that's pretty much me. Um, you can find a write-up on this talk on the ThoughtBot blog. Uh, there's also going to be the slides on speaker deck. If you want to talk to me, if you have any questions, I'm at a Meredith. And then if you're really uh, frustrated with time zones and you want a funny video, this will make you laugh for a bit. And that's it for me. Thank you.